Hey everyone, Yanni plays here and welcome back to another episode here on the Infinite Realm. And for once we are not starting with a time lapse on Hogwarts, no we are starting on top of the nether. Why are we starting on top of the nether you may ask? Well, because I need a gold farm. Why do you need a gold farm? Because I need gold. Why do you need gold? Why do you ask so many questions? No, all jokes aside, I was posting a picture on Reddit about the progress in Hogwarts and I started talking about all the material that I needed and that is a pain to get Blackstone and then this hero here mentioned why are you not just trading for it? And every resource that I don't need to mine is a good resource. So let's go ahead and get started building a little gold farm. Well, as you can see, behind me, the farm is built, including the bordering section, but I need to get 24 piglins. And if you look at the name tags, you can see I still need eight of them. Well, technically I would need seven, but oh, I lost you. Come on. Technically need seven, but one of them I forgot to name tag, so I need to go and get another one. And while usually it wouldn't be too big of a problem to get all of them, well, we can see it in the fog, but didn't got any spawns. And then I talked to Brad. I'm like, hey, are you in the nether? He's like, yep, I'm building a gold farm. So, yeah, we're in such a close proximity and we are both building a gold farm. And I'm telling you, the AI of those guys is weird. The ones with the crossbow, you constantly lose. Like here, it's like, come on, just come around this corner. Whereas the one with the sword, they're just like locked onto the target and they're getting you. So I definitely prefer the ones with the sword because they're faster to get up here. But then on the other side, the ones with the crossbow, I can, if I find them, I can get like two or three of them at the same time and uh, get all of them up because their, their hits don't really hurt. Whereas the sword, yeah, the sword hurts. Now, yeah, I probably should put on my chest plate, but I just went through like four totem of undying, so we should be fine. Well, that was a really bad place it was in there. Looking forward to see that in a recording because I thought I placed the block, but apparently I did not. Oh man, now my heart rate is up. And that was the last one that needed to go in here. Man, that took way longer than I thought it would. So let's grab some glass. And tear down all of that stuff here. And 
then let's see what raids we are getting. Okay, let's turn it on. We have almost a double chest of gold. But that was all we had from one AFK session. So let's see how long it takes us to go through that. And how much blackstone we are getting out of it. So it looks like the farm is working. And let me see if I can explain how this farm works. And I'm not going to explain all the redstone stuff. But I can leave the link down in the description. Uh to this design to a tutorial where somebody else is building it so we have all of our uh, gold ingots up here this hopper by card is sucking it up and is dispensing it equally to those three hoppers and those three hoppers are feeding in three droppers and then every few seconds we are going to have each of them spit out eight ingots so, 3 times 8 is 24, so each of them can pick one up and then throw their things up. Now, as soon as they throw their stuff out, we are having uh, this slime block here retracting, this one here moving everything over, and then this one here is extending again and is shooting everything down. And because everything is aligned on the chest, that means that everything is going in here and is being sucked up by those different hoppers here. And then of course at the beginning we need a little bit more to A, compensate for all of the items, but also at the beginning everything flies past quite a bit faster than over here. If Everything is full and nothing can be picked up anymore. The items just go into the fire. Obsidian, crying obsidian, string, fire charges, and two chests of ender pearls that I probably not even need. Nether brick, soul sand, and then three with iron nuggets. Quartz, very excited about that. Spectral arrows. And then our black stone and gravel. And let's see. Honestly, I think that is going to be pretty viable. They're now doing that for 10 minutes. Still a lot of ingots left. So I guess a chest of gold is probably going to give me about a chest of blackstone. So it took them 20 minutes to get through a full double chest. And let's go ahead and see what we got. We are missing about two rows here. Yeah, I think we can say it's going to give us about one double chest full. Gravel. The same. Now all I have to do is redesign everything here to make sure that we don't have this issue here. Now that I finally have the fog turned off, you can see how awfully close Brad's gold farm is to mine but so far after a few days I don't have any issues with rates or anything now, of course if we both would afk in the nether at the same time it for sure would negatively affect the rates that we are each getting but yeah I am able to get quite a lot of blackstone out of here so after like afking for one night I have a lot of gold and have more than plenty of blackstone. But one thing that I have to remember is to always turn this one here on. 
because if I don't turn that on, then the rotten flesh is going to overflow everything here, and I'm just getting about uh, one and a half chests per slice, and those are three different slices. Um, I'm not getting that much gold out of it if I'm not having that garbage disposal running. But enough about the gold farm, let's get back to Hogwarts and another time-lapse. This one here probably was my favorite part building so far and designing. I just think it ended up looking really really nice with that small tower in the back, the bigger tower in the front that actually bump out on the top and then of course the gate itself. with all four colors integrated in it. But yeah, that's where we are standing so far. And if we are looking over here, you could see that this one here is gonna be even bigger. And last rocket, so let's make it count. You can see that is just going to be a massive, massive building. So if we look into the material list, it's going to be 51,000 blocks. So that is a more than double what I usually do. Usually they're between 20 and 25. So that is going to be a very large build. Now, luckily, a lot of the material shouldn't be an issue to get, but then if we look at things like glass, over two shulker boxes. That's going to be a lot of glass that I'm going to need to get this one here completed. And deep slate is another one that I am running low that I will have to go and get. But considering it is that big, I am not 100% sure if this build here is going to be completed within just one week. So maybe next week you are not going to see an update on Hogwarts. Because I'm probably going to have to spend a little bit more time on this one here. But there's still plenty of things to do. And if you want to know what it is, you better tune in again next week. Thank you very much for watching. And have a good rest of your day.